Have you ever considered or explored or researched voluntary assisted dying? It's, um, it's a curious one. It's provocative. It's frightening. It's scary. It divides families. It divides everyone. I think it's a good thing to talk about. I certainly have explored the process. Where I live in Australia, in this state, it has only been legal to apply for voluntary assisted dying in the last year, so it's relatively new. I wanted to speak about it because it is my belief that not many people are speaking about it, and I think it's a worthy subject. One of the things that I found in my research was that unless you're quite specifically asking about it or you bring it up to your doctor, your carer, whoever it is that's managing the dying person, now let's get some context here. There is guidelines. You need to be diagnosed uh, with a terminal illness before you can explore those options. And I might say it's not for everyone, but I thought I would share my experience of it as I think it's really vital to be well informed. Now, the thing is, if you don't bring it up or you don't go on websites and do your research, any practitioner, be it your carer or just anyone in hospital, they're not going to they're not going to have the conversation with you unless you bring it up with them it's against all their ethics now that makes sense to me that they wouldn't do that so you have to know what your rights are what your obligations are as the person dying and the person who is the support person now if you've already brought it up with your carer your doctor there's a bit of a challenge. Now, remember, I'm saying this all from a lay person. I'm not qualified. Let me just say that very clearly. This is my perspective. The carer, the doctor, all of those people that come under the medical oath, if you like, they're not going to bring it up to you. They can't even be seen to say, if you're interested in this, inquire sooner rather than later while you still can comprehend things. You have to have a deep understanding. So sometimes what happens is that people start the application too late. Now, forgive me if this is provocative for you, but I think we need to speak about it. Now, what that means is by the time you go through all the processes, there's interviews with the nurse practitioner or whoever's in charge of the program in your local area. You need to then have an interview with doctor number one, an interview with doctor number two. You then make the formal application. And once you've done that and all the paperwork's been submitted, you then have another interview with doctor number one. Hope you're following me so far. And let me tell you, it's confronting takes it right up to you, how you feel, what's going on, what on earth would that be like? And then once you've ticked all those boxes, and I mean that very respectfully, you then have to wait for the pharmacist and the nurse to deliver the substance to your place. Now, all of that takes time. And if you are diagnosed with a terminal illness, if you're not aware of all this and you become sick, fragile, very ill, very quickly, but in your moment of wellness, this is what you know you would choose. Time is of the, es of the essence. And one of the observations I've made is that sometimes it's left too late and the people actually can't decide because there's not enough time or just because of drugs and all of that, they are not in a position to make a decision more well, cognitively they're impaired, I suppose is the best way to put it. 
And I wanted to put all this in this video today so that you can be informed. If you're doctor, nurse, whoever you're dealing with, if you've already spoken to them and they haven't come back with you, it's very tricky for them. They can't be seen to be coercing or complicit in any way. Now, as a lay person, it never entered my head about that. So you have to get clear about your facts. You have to also know that there is a time that takes to go through all this. And it was my experience that the process took too long and that it wasn't able to be brought to fruition because of a whole lot of reasons. But I would like to hear your comments. Now, please don't be offensive. It's not for everyone. I would love to hear your thoughts on this because if this is something that you would choose for you, if you were in a situation where you're being diagnosed with a terminal illness and you certainly knew your prognosis and you were certainly aware of the situation you're in, would this be an option for you? I think it's worth some discussion if you're up for it. I'm going to preface all of this, everything I've said today, with this. Like I've said in my other videos, you have to be prepared to work on yourself. You have to be prepared to know yourself at an intimate level to make major decisions about choosing the right to die. So once again, personal development is intricately in, involved in the dying process and ultimately death. But you have to be aware that if you're thinking along these lines, learn more about yourself, discover who you are, so that if this is a path that you would like to take, you can be courageous, you can surround yourself with people equally as courageous that can help you choose and help you to have the right to die with dignity if that's what you choose. I am open to any comments that are valuable and add value here. Please, if you want to speak to me personally, do book a call. This is an open invitation to you. I, I'm guess, I guess you've gathered by now. You can talk about hard things with me. This is Mary Scott. Thanks for watching.